I suddenly knew everything. You buy a drink? Yeah, I'd love one. Are you gonna make love to me now? I don't make love. I fuck. What's up guys, Austin Summers here, international dating coach. I've taught hundreds of men in person on four continents, reach millions online with my content. Today what we're gonna get into is another Hollywood versus reality video where I break down 10 romantic scenes from movies and TV and give my take on it as a dating coach. Vicky Cristina Barcelona. Isn't that the, uh, isn't that the painter that we just saw at the gallery? Oh yeah, right. He's the uh, the the painter with the bad divorce. Yeah. Mark told us it was, was half listening. He keeps looking over here. Well, that's because you keep provoking contact. I'm not provoking contact. Why you've been throwing little looks at him all night? I'm just drinking my wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course you are. You, you must be doing something because uh, he's coming over. Thank the Lord, there's finally a character in a movie who's a man who approaches a woman. Oh my God. American? I wanna give a side note here. So you don't wanna stare at the girl a bunch before you go and approach. That's the, one of the most creepy things that you could do. Shows a lack of confidence and can even arouse a sense of fear in the girl. So what you should do is as soon as you see the girl, go up and approach. It shows that you're confident and she can get swept up in this experience of meeting a guy and it happens spontaneously as opposed to kind of like overly strategic and weird. I'm Christina and this is my friend Vicky. What color are your eyes? Uh, they're blue. Well, I'd like to invite you both to come with me to Oviedo. To come where? To Oviedo. For the weekend, we live in one hour. Okay, that would not work in real life. First of all, this guy is showing no emotion. His face is completely dead. His open is one word, which he has a very like masculine vibe, but there's no like playfulness. There's no banter. The girls have no space to feel like relaxed. And then from that place, he goes into immediately assuming they're gonna come with him for a weekend. And he also says that 10 seconds into conversation. What? Where is Oviedo? A very short flight. By plane? Mm -hmm. What's in Oviedo? I go to see a sculpture that is very inspiring to me. Very beautiful sculpture. You'll love it. Oh, right. You, you, you're asking us to fly to Oviedo and back? Mm, no, we'll spend the weekend. I mean, I'll show you around the city and we'll eat well, we'll drink. Good wine, we'll make love. Yeah, who, who exactly is going to make love? Hopefully the three of us. Oh my God. I'll get your bill. Jesus, this guy, he doesn't beat around the bush. Look, senor. <laughs> Not only they're going for the weekend, the idea of sex is completely on the table now. He didn't build them up. So this is the thing with women and men, we have different sexualities. Men is more like a light switch where it's like instantaneous. We have a more latent sexuality so we can get horny just throughout the day even without no girl being there. When we see a girl we like, it's usually either a yes or a no. Whereas with women, it's more like a volume knob in terms of their attraction. So they see a guy, maybe they like the way he looks, he comes over, the way he speaks is attractive. He's not hot until he opens his mouth. He's attractive in general. His behavioral cues over time show that he's a leader, that he's a social guy, that he is flirty, that he's funny. And then she gets to experience that guy over time and then Afterward, you know, they can have sex because she's fully turned on slowly. So this would not happen. Maybe in a different life. Why not? Life is short. Life is dull. Life is full of pain. And this is a chance for something special. Right. Well, who, who exactly are you? I am Juan Antonio. And you are Vicky. And you are Christina, right? Or is it the other way around? Yeah, but, yeah, you know, right. it could be the other way around because, frankly, it doesn't matter because either of us will do to keep the bed warm. You know, I, I get it. 
Well, you're both so lovely and beautiful. Yeah, thank you, but we do not fly off to make love with whoever invites us to charming little Spanish towns. Does she always analyze every inspiration until each grain of charm is uh, uh, squeezed out of it? It's good that he, he does that because he's addressing the elephant in the room, which is the brunette is very critical. She's throwing in a lot of objections. So he wants to get the friend on his side. So that way it's two people versus one and she can kind of get swept into this. And you can notice the blonde giving like just a crazy amount of indications that she likes the guy. She's like playing with her hair. She's like smiling. She's being flirty. And he's just kind of like holding this ground, dealing with the objections as they come up in an almost poetic way. This is good. Uh, my eyes are green, actually. Oh God, look, I, I, I wouldn't call our reluctance to leap at your sexual offer being over-analytical. If you would care to join us for some recognized form of social interaction like a drink, then we'd be fine. But otherwise, I think you should try, you know, offering to some other table. What offended you about the offer? Surely not that I find you both beautiful and desirable. Offended me, no. It's, it's very amusing, galling, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> is it my imagination or is it getting a little late? I Should we go? I would love to go to Oviedo. What? Are you kidding? Can I we discuss this? I think it would be this? so much fun. I think we should go. I would love to go. Christina, can we discuss this some other time? When You know, when I saw you across the room at the art gallery, I noticed you have a... Uh, Beautiful lips, very full, very sensual. Thank you. Okay, okay, look, I'm, you know, if you want to well, go. I can't guarantee the love making because I happen to be very moody. Let's not negotiate like a contract. I came over here with no subterfuge and presented my best offer. Now I hope you will discuss it and give me the pleasure to take you with me to Oviedo. Don't over compliment the girl because it makes the compliments lose their value. One compliment about a girl's beauty is fine for most of the time. In fact, it's better to compliment girls on things that they have more direct control over and that isn't directly associated with their beauty. 50 Shades of Grey. What's this? It's a non disclosure agreement. It means that you cannot discuss anything about us with anyone. I'm afraid my lawyer insists on it. I'd never talk to anyone about us anyway. That's how the rich being prep. Oh my God. She's got the wine, <laughs> the opera music playing. This isn't like Pap's Blue Ribbon in Trap House. Are you going to make love to me now? Two things. First, I don't make love. I fuck. Hard. And the second thing? Wow, that's actually good. So this girl's extremely at the effect. She's very feminine. She also plays into like what a lot of women feel. Maybe they feel a little un insecure around a guy who's more high status than them. So this plays into their fantasies. But the first thing he was like, I don't make love, I fuck. So many girls, that plays into everything they want. Because so many girls, the kind of sex that they're getting is just like, the guy's not very sure of himself either. Maybe he's trying to like be slow and romantic because he saw that on a movie. And finally, now she has a guy who fucks her. I've had so many girls that I date where we have kind of romantic sex. They say they want romantic sex and rough sex at different times. I'll be romantic with the girl. We'll kind of like be very like sensual. And then, you know, you reach down and she's like not that wet. And then when you're very rough with her, you like start out by like pulling her hair, pushing up her against the wall, like pinning her, like making out with her, like spanking her. And it's just like making her call you like daddy and master and all these types of things, but getting more rough with her. You reach down 
down afterward and it's just like a river is just flowing out of her vagina. And the way he says it too, there's no ambiguity. This guy fucks. This guy fucks. <laughs> It's just beyond this door. What is? My playroom. Like your Xbox and stuff? It's important that you know you can leave at any time. Very key. You can leave at any time. If you want to get laid more, make the girl more comfortable. You can leave at any time. Don't worry, I'll get you an Uber. Make her feel at ease. Figure out what is a source of discomfort in the girl's mind and handle that objection. You can leave at any time. I'll get you an Uber. Don't worry about it. I'm only five minutes away. No pressure. That's the way you fuck a lot of girls. Why? What's in there? I meant what I said. The helicopter's in standby to take you whenever you want to go. Could you just open the door? Fucking Uber. He's got a helicopter. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Is this what I'm competing against? <laughs> Limitless. What's wrong? What? You don't like me and I don't blame you. You see a self-defeating, energy-sucking piece of shit who's sponging off your husband. You're wishing I'd blow my brains out, but my existence shouldn't make you this upset. What is it? That's none of your business. Something wrong in law school? How do you know I'm in law school? People who aren't usually don't carry around dry, academically constipated books about a dead Supreme Court justice. You're a creep, aren't you? You've been, you've been following me. No, I just knows the book. So, boom. Whatever insult she's throwing out, he's just like, yeah, you know, I understand. Any objection, any insult, anything you get, you just kind of like roll off. You can address it, right? And addressing things takes away the power of them. Like, oh, you know, it's obviously not about that. And he's... He's now like very socially aware. He understands that hurt people hurt people. They're not, they don't just go around like <laughs> for no reason. So he's like, what's wrong? What's the actual issue? And then he's got that sight to like see something she has. And a good rule of pickup too is like have a wealth of information and knowledge. And it doesn't matter if it's super deep into one subject. If you have shallow knowledge about everything, you can relate to anyone and just being aware. This is another reason why meditation is so good for game pickup, being good with girls, having good relationships. It makes you very aware of what people have and what they're doing and able to see things that other people don't. No, I just noticed the book. You just saw the corner of it. How did you know that? I'd seen it before, 12 years ago in college, sitting on the couch of a TA I was trying to make, waiting for her to come back out of the bathroom, hoping she'd have a condom. Somehow my unconscious had served that up. A memory I'd never even recorded. Or was it there the whole time? And all I needed was the access. If you're writing a paper, that's not the book I'd use. Well, who asked you? Hastings has his oral history. I'd start there. Interesting point. Grammatically, this guy was an idiot, which sort of gives credence to the theory that one of the clerks he had fired actually wrote most of this guy's major opinions. You could Google the clerk's sons. They'd love to talk to you, exonerate their dad. That'd give you something that no one else has. Anybody Information from the Odd Museum show. Boom. And what's another thing that women are attracted to? Intelligence. He's also showing he's effective. He's helping her accomplish one of her goals with a very easy kind of like, oh yeah, just do that. This is this is the better option. Show a half-read article, you know some PBS documentary. Jack. It was all bubbling up in my frontal lobes, mixing itself together into a sparkling cocktail of useful information. <laughs> she didn't okay, have so a chance. What, what, what are your suggestions? We'd really worked on her paper, too. In 45 minutes, it was a polished gem. She was pleased. Boom, removing a source of stress from her life. The whole time, he's probably bantering with her and cracking jokes. To be honest, I could see that scene happening. Californication. Hey. Hey, yourself. Mrs. B. I just wanted you to know I love your writing. Oh, 
quite possibly my four favorite words in the English language. Hits all the pleasure centers. Positively rhapsodic. I didn't think it was appropriate to say it in front of your, um, your ex-wife, lover, whatever. Oh, God, I wish you had. That would have pissed her off. You like pissing her off, don't you? I do. I like pissing off my ex, too. Cool. Is he watching? <laughs> Dude, imagine if my infield was like this. It's just like, hey, hey yourself, what's up? Okay, <gasps> boom! Just like a break into the bedroom. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> boom! <laughs> Smack down on that bitch! You wanna fuck? Yeah. The Departed. making a house call have I seen you professionally no no, no. I, know, I know who you are though I know you guys got to use their service revolver in the course of duty and then they get to come to talk to you about their feelings and whatnot no no I know how it goes <laughs> uh, you're a mental health professional mm -hmm. yeah I have an appointment on this floor oh well you'll have fun they're all freaking crazy on that floor <laughs> Boom, this is like a good vibe to have. See, many scenes that I've seen and like that we've broken down, they're like, the guy's very serious, very stoic, but this is the perfect balance of like being masculine and also showing that he's got like this free flowing, smiling, happy side, right? And happiness is another trait that women are incredibly attracted to. I'm one more up. Oh, fancy policeman. Yeah, that's right, fancy. Are you a statey? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm actually going to law school also. Uh, Suffolk nights? Well, yeah, they don't run Hobbit at night last time I checked. When, when is the last time you checked? Before I went to fucking Suffolk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was Boom, that's a fucking power move right there. He's holding the door open so he's having the conversation. So what does that show? It shows that he can deal with social pressure. He's effective, he knows the one thing he has to do to keep that conversation going. And then he's dealing with the social pressure of a bunch of guys who are in the elevator, which means they're either going to work or going somewhere else. No one really wants to be held in an elevator, but he's like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just deal with that, deal with the consequences later. I went to UMass, I, I wasn't insulting you. Well, I thought you were, so now you gotta buy me dinner. Well, maybe you can shoot someone and then you'd have to see me professionally. Boom, flirty back and forth like, you know, these are potential date plans. She's like, well, yeah, you'd have to see me. We'd have to hang out anyway. These are two options for us to meet each other. So she's showing that she's open. He's showing that he's interested. I'll stab someone in the heart with a fucking ice pick <laughs> if it gets me dinner with you. <laughs> Boom. So that's good. He's like, he would do anything basically to, to hang out with her, but he's saying it with like a smile. So it's not like, I would do anything for you, my princess. Show Bob's and Vagana Plus. He's actually like, you know, I'd stab someone in the fucking ice pick, like to see you, ha ha ha, he's smiling. Like that's a good banter and like, she's like obviously responding to that well. He turns back, let's see what he says. No, no, that's all right, I'm a detective. Boom, so this is, this is a really good scene because not only is he holding up the elevator dealing with the social pressure, he looks back in to make sure that everyone else in there is having a good time. This is one of the defining traits of a good player. He makes everyone around him have a good time. I'll find you. No, sir, I'm just joking, I need the guy. That helps. Nice to meet you, Madeline. Boom, gets her contact information and then uses the girl's name. This is the best scene that I have broken down. That would actually work in real life. It's realistic. Good examples of flirting there. Wedding Crashers. Go on, take it, you hyena. Don't say thank you. Hi, you're good. That thing? I'm just warming up. Last week I did a uh, exact replica of, to scale of Wrigley Field. <laughs> Honest to God, I don't have where to put it. Okay, then I'll take a sports car. How about a dance? That's what I really wanted. Okay, uh, not the most realistic opening because the girl's going up to him, but what is he showing there? He's showing he's having fun with some kids, you know, he's touching these kids' hearts. Showing qualities of like someone who'd be a good potential dad is actually an important thing to show in game. And that's another reason why having a dog is a good thing to have because it shows that you can take care of another thing. It shows, it mimics those dad-like qualities.
whatever you're really good at, you want to show the girl in a non try hard way. So for example here, he's a really good dancer, so taking a girl for a dance is a good thing to do, because you're on the dance floor, you're obviously going to show her that you can dance. Whereas like if you were on the, just talking to a girl on the street, and then you just start dancing, it's like kind of try hard. We all have different strengths, so you want to play to your strengths when you're doing pickup. It's just that we lost a lot of really good men out there. I'm sorry. Gloria, I think I gotta go get some fresh air. Thank you so much for the dance, and it was wonderful to meet you. I wish I was stronger. So this is a little bit funny. It's obviously a comedy, but bringing a girl through a range of emotions is very attractive, right? Because they feel this like roller coaster ride of emotions. Women don't want everything to be not no drama. No, everything's just stable and fine. Women crave that like emotional roller coaster. Whether they claim to uh, enjoy it or not is a different thing. They are attracted to men who can give them that range of emotions. Jeremy! Jeremy, wait up! So you dove into the icy water? I mean, why would a man risk his own life for the life of a complete stranger? <laughs> and like that, that's kind of a good way to get her alone. This is often like the second stage of an interaction is when you're in a different venue with a girl. Let's say you're on a couch. Her friends aren't there. Her family isn't there to judge her. So it's you sitting down with the girl relaxing, kind of a more chill vibe. She gets a different experience being with you there. Check out, check out my video, Five Ways to Make a Girl Fall in Love with You. We talk about how you can involve this into your pickups. The great 19th century philosopher Schopenhauer, he said at that moment when a human sees another human in danger, that there's this breaking in of metaphysical awareness. Do you know what that awareness is, Gloria? What? So yeah, obviously this is a comedy, so it's kind of funny. But another attractive quality of men is altruism. So he dove into icy water and saved a guy. So if you can evolve some element of that into a story that actually is in your own life, great. Because these are things that women are universally attracted to. That we're all one. That separateness is an illusion. And that I'm one with everyone. With the Prime Minister of England, you and me fat kid from what's happening. Natalie Portman, Carrot Top, Jay-Z, Weird Al Yankovic. Mm -hmm. This shows that he has like a level of spiritual awareness too that we're all one. And no matter if you're a religious person, if you're into meditation, if you're into psychedelics, if you're just like a social person who gets this intuitively, you realize that we're all one. We're all one entity. That separateness and thinking that you're better than or thinking that you're worse than is uh, separation from that obvious truth that we're all one. So it's kind of like a spiritual thing there. It's quite good. Um, and if you don't feel that way, work on your spiritual life. We're all one. We are. That my hands are your hands. Oh. And that my cheek is really your cheek. And that my lips According to Mr. Schopenhauer, they are. <laughs> so yeah, that's like clever uh, physicality too. One thing there is he's touching her in a way where it's social touching and kind of like things that are more acceptable before moving up to things that are less acceptable or more high pressure. So for example, holding someone's hand, touching someone's hand, you do that all the time, right? So the difference between holding someone's hand when you're dancing and then just holding someone's hand isn't a big jump. So there's not much anxiety in that jump. There's not much contrast in that physicality. And then after that, he says, your cheek is my cheek and like brushes her cheek. Now people in general, they're more sensitive about touching of their face hair, getting close and like kissing, that kind of thing. Depending on where the girl is, you want to kind of touch in that kind of way. So you touch more vulnerable areas or areas where she may be more uncomfortable later on when she is comfortable and ready to receive that physicality. Shark attack three. 
I'm exhausted. Yeah, me too, but... You know, I'm really wired. What do you say I take you home and eat your pussy? <laughs> I guess the only thing I can really break down there is... Uh, a lot of objection handling is acknowledging the objection and actually agreeing to it. So for example, if the girl says, oh, I gotta be up really early, you say, oh, me too, it sucks. What time do you have to be up? Oh, I have to be up at 8.30. Oh my God, really? I have to be up at 6.30 a.m. You kind of agree with their objection, so it takes away like the weight of their objection. Blue Valentine. Can I talk to you for a second? Why? You think I stole that money, don't you? Yeah, you do. No. Look, I've stolen money before, okay? I know what it's like to get busted. That's what it feels like. Okay. I didn't steal it. I got a job. Okay? All this right. is my job. All right? I got it. I make money. Okay, I got it. Money I can take girls out on dates with. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. Is th this that's the most autistic scene I've seen so far? I'd make I'd make the money. I just so you know I had make the money. I make the money to take you on date. It's like I don't know how this this is kind of unrealistic the way she's she's reacting. But then again, it is Ryan Gosling, so who can say no to those beautiful eyes? <laughs> What's your name? Go away. Go away. Go away. That's a weird name. <laughs> Is this her house? No, it's a home for little people. Oh, wait, so what is she doing? She's working with an old person. Oh, okay. Like, this could be horribly misconstrued by guys. I know, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not stealing money. Let me just talk to you through this crack in this door. Yeah, go away, I mean, that's a funny name. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I wanna give you something. Look at that. That's my business card. I don't have a phone <laughs> or a phone number, but if you call this number right here and then you ask for me, they'll tell me you called. Great. Who's, who should I say is calling? What the fuck was that, dude? That was very strange. Weird eye contact in the beginning, saying, I don't, I don't worry, I'm not stealing money from this person, talking to her through a crack in the door, as opposed to saying, yo, let's have a conversation here, as opposed to through the crack in the door. Yeah, and like, that's the weakest close ever. There's no way to contact me. Here's like, I'm, let me just write down some people that can contact me. What? Very bad game. James Bond, Goldfinger. I'm not interested. Let's go. What would it take for you to see things my way? A lot more than you've got. How do you know? I don't want to know. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned man his last request? You've asked for this. <laughs> Whoa. Um, okay, <laughs> I want to first break down the... Uh... He's very unreactive to what she's saying. Now, I don't think anyone in human history has had a good experience ripping a girl around like that. That was very silly. But any objection she gives, he's just like, it's like it's bouncing off of him almost. She's like, -da 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 -da. Get up. Certainly. Ah! Now let's both play. Okay, if a girl pushes you away like that, don't keep escalating on her physically. Uh, give her some space, <laughs> some time, <laughs> build up her emotional state again and then go in for the kiss. 
just forcing yourself to kiss a girl on a, on hay is not the best move. Out of sight. And buy a drink? Yeah, I'd love one. Sit down. Yeah, that's a good open. I mean, it is missing some things that would have made it better, but step one of an open is get her attention. He got her attention by like flicking open his Zippo lighter again and again. And he's just standing there, very grounded, relaxed. The way he delivered the can I buy you a drink thing is very relaxed. I wouldn't buy a girl a drink immediately in the interaction because that kind of shows that that's how you have to game. It's like, I need to buy this girl a drink for her to talk to me, almost type of thing. And that is kind of like a pattern for you. I would at least let her work for it a little bit. <laughs> I'm Gary. I'm Celeste. It takes forever to get a drink around here. There's only the one bar. mattress. Oh, don't go. No guy's body. Oh, they're fine. I mean, you just got here. Can you help yourself. You like bourbon? I love it. We got that out of the way. Tell me, Celeste, what do you do for a living? Yeah, I'm a sales rep. And I came here to call in a customer, but uh, they gave me a hard time because I'm a girl. Is that how you think of yourself? Dude, he's so relaxed. His, his vibe, his energy is just super, super, super relaxed. He's not like thinking ahead. He's very like present in making comments that are situational, such as like the drinks, the bar. He's not trying to get like everything out too quickly. He has a nice pace of his voice, good eye contact. The only thing is in the beginning part of the interaction, you should be doing a little bit more talking. You may be relaxed, but the girl may not be. So by her hearing your voice, she can relax over time. As a sales rep? As a girl. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I like your hair. I like your outfit. Well, actually, this is my second favorite outfit. I had a first favorite, but it got ruined and oh, I had to get rid of it. You did? It smelled. Really, having it clean didn't help? No. <laughs> so tell me, Gary, what so this is actually realistic, but this only happens once in a while and it's with a girl that your energy kind of connects with, your personality connects with and you feel there's this instant connection so you don't really need to try super hard. How far living. do you want to go with this? Uh, not yet, don't say anything yet. I don't think it works for somebody else. You know, Gary and Celeste, what do they know about anything? Well, this is your game I've never played before. It's not a game, it's not something you play. Well, does this make any sense to you? It doesn't have to. It's something that happens. It's like seeing someone for the first time. Like you could be passing on the street and you, know, and you look at each other and for a few seconds there's this kind of a, a recognition. Like you both know something. The next moment the person is gone. And, and it's too late to do anything about it. And you always remember it because it was there and you let it go and you think to yourself, what if I had stopped? What if I had said something? What if? What if? It may only happen a few times in your life. Or once. Or once. That is the perfect mindset to have with game, is that you can recognize when it's like the right person, the right moment, the right thing. He's saying like, it's too late to do anything about it. You need to do something about it. You need to be the one approaching as the man. And the pain of regret weighs in tons and the pain of taking action and going and approaching that girl weighs in ounces. So always make sure that you're the one going up. Wow, dude, that's a good scene. Thank you to Wired and Tude 5 for inspiring this video. If you wanna know the correct way to meet girls in real life, Austin Summers Academy is my online mentorship course that shows you how to get women into your life through a combination of examples, practical exercises, and my personal mentorship. The link is in the description for that. Check it out. Thanks for watching, Chain Gang, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.
peace. Keep a gun chain on my neck, fly as a jet. Boy, better treat me with respect. Keep a gun chain on my neck, fly as a jet. Boy, better treat me with respect. Keep a gun chain.